What's going on, guys? It is Monday night. Of course, that's when we're premiering this. But if you're watching this other than Monday, we appreciate you just as much. And if you're listening to this on the audio podcast, we appreciate it there as well. But this is that video where we give you that top 10 back issue list to be on the lookout for, right? That's right. This is an ever-growing list. And we are dropping 10 books that we think have a good chance of spiking in the near or long-term future. And we're going to get into it right now, starting with number 10. Coming out of the gate at number 10, we're hitting you right with a twofer. That's right. We're talking G.I. Joe Volume 1. We're talking Marvel G.I. Joe issues number 26 and 27. That's right. We just talked about the IDW reprint on the last call show on Friday night that they've got coming out on FOC that just today, uh, Monday, and, you know, it reprints these issues, 26 and 27. It's a big indicator. Um, and we've also talked about the fact that the G.I. Joe movie is coming. The Snake Eyes solo movie is coming. And the Snake Eyes solo movie is going to directly take elements from these two issues. These back issues have been on the rise. They saw spikes as soon as that movie was announced. And then, like everything else with the comic book spec cycle, they dropped back down. Savvy investors, savvy collectors who are looking for those long-term buys can now pick them up hold on to these. These are going to be important forever for Snake Eyes collectors if they can get this G.I. Joe and Hasbro movie franchise right. These have so much potential for ROI based on where they are right now. Be careful looking for those first and second prints, although I will say similar to the like Star Wars stuff, not a huge price difference between first and second prints. A lot of people don't care either way, but definitely something to be paying attention to. So we're hitting that number nine spot, but before we get into it, we want to let you know that we're going to talk about picks nine through six as they all relate to each other. They all relate to that Predator alien news coming over to Marvel, but at number nine, we get Dark Horse Presents number 36. We talk so much about Star Wars back issues right now, but there was a time, Brian, when you and I were talking about them and it seemed like we were speaking to deaf ears, a lot of crickets going on. So you mentioned Dark Horse Presents uh, number 36, we're talking about the first appearance of Aliens versus Predators here. Now, this is a heavily printed book. There is one dealer on eBay who is driving prices down because he has multiple hundreds listed at about $12 shipped. But I don't let that discourage me. I look at it and go, well, this is your opportunity to buy multiple copies at this price that you may not see two, three, four years down the road. These will dry up at some point, no matter how many are printed. Um, and the reality is we're going to see new comics. We're going to see uh, new media. And all of this is going to keep this talked about. Yeah, and we always talk about these titles because they're great because they hit multiple demographics between movie lovers, between video game lovers, and between comic book lovers, all with these books. Even the next one at that number eight spot, we're talking about Dark Horse Presents number 24 as well. Right. So you're talking about the first appearance of Aliens with this one. Now, Aliens, obviously, super successful uh, movie franchise from Ridley Scott. Has a cult fan base. We've seen some people get on board with the comics. But again, hasn't been that full comics crossover. But uh, we'll get bullish about this in the same way we were with Conan and Star Wars. We believe in what's going to happen. First appearance of Aliens criminally underpriced at this point. Yeah, and a lot of people might have picked this one up by mistake because they might have been thinking they were getting that other Dark Horse Presents number 24 that has that first published work from Donny Cates, right? Right, that's volume two. Volume one is what you're looking for if you're looking for Aliens. If you're looking for Donny Cates, you're looking volume two. And we said we're going through picks nine through six here, and then coming at number seven, we get that Predator number one. Right, so here's the first appearance of Predator, gorgeous cover. It's been on a lot of your favorite top 10 lists, hot 10 lists, and all of that. Um, definitely a book people are paying attention to, but definitely a book that people are going to fade off of. And that's when the time to buy is. I've got my eye on these books. Again, another high printed book. Dark Horse did not care back in the day. They printed the books heavily. They printed later prints with the same covers. You really got to look on the inside cover to find those later prints. So definitely, you know, a book that you, a lot of people are going to be negative about. But Brian, you know, I love the Boo Birds, man. When they're saying no, I'm saying yes. And then when the rest of the world comes around, I'm sitting there holding the copy. So I'm good with this. This is a property we believe in. If you're going to grab the first aliens, if you're going to grab aliens versus predators, you might as well grab predators. Yeah, and you bring all those in together. And then at the number six spot, you culminate with that aliens versus predator number one. 
Right. And this plays into one of the trends that we've talked about consistently. If your argument is, well, these other back issues have spiked a little bit. Here's a book that hasn't spiked at all, a cover price book that really hasn't taken off. The only significant sale is a lot of 48 copies that somebody sold on eBay recently for just over $200. So about cover price. But you got a key first appearance here in the character that Sanaa Lathan played in one of the later films, but a real cult popular character within the aliens and predator community. That's something to pay attention to. This to me, could this be your Clone Wars number one type book? Uh, could be. I like what my man Brian says for cover price. It's a lottery ticket, but you got these main books that everybody's going to talk about and everybody's going to pay attention to, but this is a book that people aren't going to talk about. Also, there's variants for this book. There's some, some limited covers. Uh, and I just think that if we're, this is going to be something that maybe we see on a TV show on Disney plus, or maybe we see a TV show on Hulu. If it comes to that, we could see some of the later characters that were created in these comic series. And remember, when Marvel bought into the Star Wars rights, we heard the Dark Horse stuff doesn't matter. The Dark Horse stuff doesn't matter. But let's be honest, the Dark Horse stuff very much matters. I expect the same to happen here. Yeah, they kept saying, oh, it's not canon. Well, it wasn't at the time, maybe. But either way... Like I said, we talked about picks nine through six. That's one of the great things about this list. We always put trends into the list. So it makes it specific to that week. But like we always say, each week builds to that greater list of everything we talked about to create that master list for you for a bunch of back issues been to look out for. And I'm just wondering at what point is Marvel just going to buy Dark Horse? Because we've seen it with Conan. We've seen it with Star Wars. Now we've seen it with Alien. Now we've seen it with Predator. What's going on? I, and not to mention... Dark Horse also lost Buffy to Boom. So Dark Horse is taking a hit. They're holding on to Stranger Things with both hands right now. And Hellboy. and, and Right. Then coming at the number five spot, we have that DC Superstars of Magic number 11. Great cover, but that's not the only reason to pick this book up, is it? No. This is the first solo Zatanna story, and we've been dropping nuggets all throughout these lists every week showing you some of these trends and some of these properties that we really believe in. And this hits home on one of the major ones that we've been talking about. And that is none other than Justice League Dark. We've talked about Bad Robot, the upcoming HBO Max show, horror being hot, these characters being characters people are not exposed to, as well as a few characters like Constantine and Swamp Thing that they already know and love. It's sure to be a hit. Zatanna has everything going for her. She's a boss. She's sexy. She's a character that hasn't been overexposed and hasn't been introduced on, on television. And we've already seen the whole magic element play out well with Marvel, with Doctor Strange, with Scarlet Witch. We're, I definitely think we can see uh, some success with Satana. A lot of people are super bullish on this character. And this is a book that really wasn't talked about until recently. Um, it, it kind of was overlooked. It was one of my kind of sleeper books. It's a tough cover with that black top border oftentimes there's chipping involved in this book not an easy book to find in good condition very scarce high grades go for big time money but you know our philosophy brian low grades better than no grade be on the lookout for these everywhere because let me tell you something this is the type of book though that we talk about that you got to pay attention to because non-savvy retailers do not realize that this book has spiked do not realize that this book suddenly has attention on it. And this book very well may be sitting in some of those short boxes on the front of the table for much lower than you can currently sell for and has the potential really to gain in value long term. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. You know, this book came out, what, 77 with that black top. Right. So it's hard to find them in high, high grade, whether they're, they're not scuffed, they're not creased, they're not, not you know, color breaking creases or even some chipping on it. And it's a great cover. Classic is classic. And first solo, Zatanna, right? Absolutely. And keeping with Zatanna, another great series to pick up is that 2010, we're going with Zatanna number one. Right, so here's the thing about this. We talked about solo story, but we also know the way females were often depicted in comics, which is why most of the stories that we're seeing play out on the big screen as they relate to female characters kind of tend to get pulled from the more modern comics. Because of that, I think if people are real bullish on Zatanna, some of this newer stuff is the stuff really to be paying attention to. This 2010 book um, is, is definitely in this whole run was popular, a lot of great cover art. There's a one in 10 incentive that does real well. Um, 
I think this is a sleeper book. This is a dollar bin book for a long time. One of those books you pick up. If you can get this thing even for cover price, though. Cover price or less, I like this. I think this is a $15 book. Yeah, plus not to mention that series had a bunch of later issues and had some great Adam Hughes covers as well, yep. right? Yep. We are now into the top three and coming in at that three spot. We got Deadpool number one, but we're talking about that 2015 issue, right? Yeah, this is the last series with Deadpool that I actually kind of got invested in as far as from a reading perspective. It brought in some new elements to this character that I really dug. And that's the first appearance of the team, the Mercs for Money. This was essentially a new Heroes for Hire, but with like no regard for morals. They weren't doing things, they weren't doing things for your benefit. This was purely a financial endeavor. But what I liked was this was a great collection of like D and F list characters. You know, the, the characters like Terror and Solo and Slapstick um, thrown into a group together, yet it all kind of made sense. I love the whole storyline of them all wearing Deadpool costumes in different colors. We saw merchandise that did really well in stores. It spun out into a miniseries that did exceptionally well. Um, it, it, the story played out into that um, Spider-Man and Deadpool series as well. A lot of people were buying the first appearances of the various characters. And we've heard some talk about some of these characters showing up in the MCU at some point. I think this would make a great movie for Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool to kind of assemble his own team, similar to what he did with X-Force, but actually have a team and have it be more um, kind of a slapstick, silly group of individuals. And the other thing is it's kind of tough to go back to the X-Force well after you did what you did in, in uh, <laughs> Deadpool 2. So this would give him that team, but from a different angle. Um, I think it, it's undervalued, more of a long shot book, but nonetheless, a book that really could pay out big time if it ended up playing out in a big way. Then coming in at the number two spot this week, we get in humans, but we're talking about that second volume issue number five. That's right. This is the first appearance of Yelena Berlova, a.k.a. the blonde Black Widow. Now, this book is already spiking. Everybody already knows she's showing up in the Black Widow solo movie. But we've got news this week that she is going to continue in the MCU with the Black Widow moniker. So even though Scarlett Johansson is gone, Black Widow is here to stay. And I think because of that, the current spike is really indicative of the short-term prospects of her showing up and being a major character in this Black Widow movie. The prices will probably drop post-Black Widow movie. That's when you strike. So this is a book, maybe not to jump on right now, but maybe to put in your staved searches on eBay, monitor these prices, watch, see when it drops, and then strike because I think there's some long-term value here, Brian. Yeah, there's a series like we talked about in Humans. We all saw how that show went, but hopefully there's rumor that Feige wants to bring them back again. That second volume caught some heat also when they're talking about that TV show coming out. So yeah, it's good definitely to see it again for a different reason. Yeah, definitely lower printed. Then coming at number one on the list, we all know Wonder Woman 1984 movie was supposed to come, didn't come, supposed to come again, but it's got pushed back. But we have a great Wonder Woman comic hit number one on the list this week. And we're talking about volume two, issue 105. Now, this is a book that spiked already, Brian, as people have, have kind of speculated on this character previously, uh, largely due to the Young Justice television show and comic. But I think there's some other nuggets of future success for this character that have kind of trickled out of DC Comics publishing of late. And it's something that we talked about on the Bolo show with the long-term play of the week. And that was Tom Taylor's deceased Dead Planet number one, which featured a brand new Justice League. And... A lot of the attention of that Justice League went to Damian Wayne as Batman and Jonathan Kent as Superman, and rightfully so. But one thing that got kind of overlooked was the third member of the Trinity, and that's Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman was an elevated Wonder Girl, Cassandra Sandmark, who first appears in this issue, Volume 2, Wonder Woman 105. So she was popular for Wonder Girl and, and all of that. But, you know, we've talked about 5G. We've talked about the fact that DC wants to be the first company to kind of age up their superheroes. We know people's blowback to that, but Brian, you and I have talked about it. It's inevitable that it has to happen in comics somewhere. And because of that, I really look at this as a great long-term investment. 
if and when DC goes there, whether or not 5G is off the table because Dan Dido, <clears throat> because Dan Didio is out the, the window, hey, maybe that's the case. But either way, it shows with what Tom Taylor did with Deceased, where they view this character. Essentially, DC is having her as the next Wonder Woman. So because of that, I feel like maybe she could get similar attention to what Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne get, but she certainly does not. So for that, she's holding down the top spot this week, Brian, because I think that this is the best spot. Yeah, and I mean, we talked about this book has gotten hit before, but I still think it's a great value for what the prices are at right now. Definitely pick oh, up yeah. and then put in your collection. But there it is, guys. There's our top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for this week. Let us know what you think of the list. Let us know if you have any of these books. Let us know if there's something that you have your eye on that we've talked about in this list because we've heard that come up as well. We, we talked about themes. You saw the theme this week about being alien versus predator. So you don't know what the theme will be next week, but I'm sure we're going to have a great one for you. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Submits Comics. Share this video out, and we'll see you in the next one. I think you only love me cause I'm poppin' This a layup, this a rebound, then it's driving